Blockbusters. The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Chapman. Hi everyone, Basil Chapman. This is the Tiger Technicians Hour, and we've got a lot to discuss, and I'm going to go through them based on the Chapman Wave methodology. What we're looking at here is that the Dow had made a leg E to 30. Whoops, did I? I didn't update that. Let me just do that right now. Made a, a move to 33,006. Was it 51? Let me just double check. Oh, no, it was 33,336, if I remember correctly. No, that was the close, yes. Now the price, at the high was 32651 So this is absolutely fascinating to me. This is normally, over all the years, for those of you who have been listening to me, based on the Chapman Wave, when we get to a leg D, I start becoming quite cautious. It can go to an E, F, and even a G. But I'm ready to, this is where the yellow light shows, and I'm ready to start an inverse short. I have not done that yet. What we have done is we've taken uh, another little bit off of our long position. I think today's uh, little bit off was about a 9% gain, single one-to-one -one on the diamonds. And here's the, the reasoning. You see that we've gone to a leg F in the Chapman Wave. Let me just do this because now we've got so many people listening uh, to, um, to the various shows here at TFNN. Uh, it's such a big increase in listenership and certainly a lot more people are now starting to use or, listen or, or, or are aware of the Chapman Wave methodology. It's only been 20 years yet at TFNN, but it takes a little time sometimes. I try to identify the lowest low bar, and then it goes peak A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. Six, seven higher peaks, but it's at the fourth highest peak that other things can happen. Well, we've gotten to the fourth the fourth highest peak, a little doji candle underneath the 200 period moving average. I uh, spent a lot of time on that in my webinar on Wednesday. The webinar that I did on Wednesday was not for a particular day or month or year. It was the Chapman Wave methodology. So that all the techniques that you can come to, and I've gone, there were a lot of people that said to me, oh, I can't make it, or I've had COVID or whatever it is. I just can't concentrate long enough. I'm, I, I want to do it, but I'm going to do it um, when I get a chance to because it's archived, you can look, you go over it a hundred times, whatever you want. So I said to them, I'm, I'm, I'm making it, the, this is going to be, out. we won't just, we'll do some tr uh, trade positions to, to show, but that's not the issue. The issue was, I wanted, I uh, announced it as a Chapman Wing methodology, and that's what we did. So one of the things we spent a lot of time on, you can see right here on, the, on these three charts, daily, weekly, monthly, are the patterns, the patterns that repeat over and over and over and over again in every single chart, in every single, it's like fractals. Why? Because it's human emotion. Remember, the, the stock market is a cumulative emotional price point in time. That's all it is. And when people say, oh, but you've got the computers, even that is generated by human beings eventually, even with artificial intelligence, it is still promulgated on the premise of observations, mostly based on, on observations in the market by people that are, are actually programming. So what we're looking at here is that straight up, straight down, one pattern. A cup formation or an arch formation or two other patterns. So there's just three patterns, either up or down, cup formation up, uh, go down and then back up, an arch formation down and then up and then back down again, or a mix, straight down, and then you make a little arch, and if that arch takes out the left side low, it can become what we call a dreaded H because you can go very sharply lower. Usually it fails at either the first or second peak and then takes out the left side, and on the right side it's the exact opposite in a reverse Y pattern. All right. So within that context, what are we looking at? We're looking at right here. A pattern that I discuss, the narrow rectangle and the wide rectangle. The narrow rectangle is where you get a price, it goes up to a certain point and then sharply comes down and then starts to make higher highs and basically higher lows 
but mostly higher highs in a stair-step manner, and it works its way back to just under, right on, or just above the previous high that was 33,272, and at that peak D, the doji candle stopped there. And then it pulled back, but instead of the, the Chapman Wave instant restart that says within three days, if there's a new high, you can have an instant restart, which could take you to a whole new buy mode of another four peaks higher, this didn't take out that left side high, it took one, two, three, the fourth candle did it, not the third. So therefore, it could do the same thing, but that's not the principle. The principle is it must be within three, uh, three bars to be an instant restart. So now we've got a peak E, pulls back, and yesterday we made a leg F. But look, the MACD is strong, the stochastics at 87%, the on-balance volume in this particular chart, when I close it up like this, you'll see that the, the, the blue on-balance volume is becoming overbought. And I usually use it on, the, on a close-up basis. So this is starting to become overbought. Okay. Um, so why did I not immediately say, okay, we're going to take profits in our diamonds and we're going to switch to the DOG one-to-one -one short? It's because I'm not ready. Look, when, you, when you're doing time, time frames, you look at, all things well the nine the 200 period moving average which was tremendous resistance back in april the 21st when it went to 35,492 before that huge move down to 29,653 well we're above that now for three sessions well even today for closes below 33,163 the 200 period moving average it's still been above for the third session that is a good sign at this particular point it's also a heads up to say, hey, it keeps fading like many of the others, uh, other indices. So just be a little careful. So that's why we again took a little bit off. Just a tad means just a small part of our core position. And we've done it a couple of times. But wait a minute. This is the third week. Even if it closes below 32,300 today, which uh, is almost impossible. And this is just a horrible, horrible set of news. Uh, uh, most probably it has to be not even economic news, just bad news. Um, we're, we're above that for the third week. Well, we, before, we were there above the trend line, the Chapman Wave inside track resistance level for four sessions, but we closed horribly lower. This is the third time, and it's pretty good. So that says for the first time, the MACD, look at, the, look at this, the MACD deflected lower before. Now look at the, the nine differential is way above the uh, slow moving average, 26 period moving average, red. And the histogram is very strong. The stochastic is really moving strongly high. It's up uh, at 60%. The on-balance volume is just flat. That's a negative. But we're within, we're within fractions of the, for the first time, the nine period crossing over the 14 period in the weekly chart of the Dow. And look at the monthly. We're about to tackle for the very first time in the sequence, look, three bars, and that's a high. Now we've got one, two, three, four bars, and it's testing this high. It's almost a symmetry there. If any time in August to September, we can actually hit 33,000, oh, maybe 800, 900, you're out of that trend line for the first time. So that's why I'm saying, I didn't want to get too carried away to suddenly go short everything. I'd rather take some profits and see what happens. And you can see exactly the same thing in the S&P and take the chart. This one did a potential chapter rate instant restart. So this could be F slash C, so F slash B, and the weekly chart is out of its out of the range of resistance. I'll be back in a moment. Basil Chapman does up 102. Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC capital market assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. 
Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi folks, I want to speak just a moment now because this is the technique that I use all the time. This is what we do. I want you to be able to see it. So what we're looking at is within the context of the S&P, this is the third session above the 200 period moving average. Now, you see this peak D here with the tiny doji. It's called the silent doji uh, in the Chapman Wave methodology. It's hinting that you could have a little bit of weakness there. Well, we were weak for another day. And then the third session, it breaks above the high of peak D, goes to leg E, and then pulls back, but doesn't even take out the left side low of that made that peak D trough. So this rally... The MACD is good. The 9 is way above the 14. This, the unbalanced volume is completely different to the Dow. It's very weak. But the stochastics flat at 88%. What is my rule of thumb? Over 80% and holding especially close to 90% is what you want to see. So mm, I didn't, uh, so far, the upside still remains intact. And I wouldn't be surprised if there are a couple of days next week where we just pop modestly. I think this 200 period moving average is going to be a magnet. We're going to be tossing around that in August, the, the rest of August for at least next week, messing around between that 4187 200 period moving average as, as support, maybe even uh, uh, resistance if it goes below. And we might make a G or with an alternate count and then even make a, another D. But I don't think it's going that much higher. That's the way I'm looking at it right now because of the magnet of the 200 period. Look at the QQQ, something completely different. Why? Because he has your peak D, and there's a chance of an instant restart. So it goes E slash A. Remember, that's the rule of thumb with, the, with an instant restart. If it's still very strong, you just continue the alphabet, and then you have the chance of an alternate count. It's not saying, oh, my God, it can go up and it can go down. No, it's saying it's going up. But I need to be aware that you could run out of letters uh, when you get to G because there's never an H. So once, now you are, you're at G. And that says there could be one more pop either today or if it's today and it goes above 330.36, that extends leg G slash C. But if it's on Monday or Tuesday, then all of a sudden you've got yourself a D just above the 200 period moving average. All of the things that we've been talking about for weeks and weeks how that was a magnet, how there was this beautiful cup formation, how there was this rectangle that could take you above it. 
everything, everything that we've spoken about based on the, I mean, what an example for Chapman Wave methodology. And even here, you've got the chance of a Chapman Wave instant restart. And that just says that this whole area of 327, where we're at right now with the 200 period moving out, no matter how high we go over the next uh, maybe week or two, this 200 period moving average has to at some point either become a, a, a propellant zone or a magnet because it pulls back the price and if it goes under it, it says, great, now you know that you're either going to reverse very sharply and pull away the further you pull away, like at 318, 317, that's 14 period moving average support in the QQQ. But at this particular stage, it just looks a little tired. Fantastic action, but it looks a little tired. It's getting to the 330.29 high that was our target, our second target because we've been long uh, via the 300% long positions. We've taken some off, took a little bit today for a 40% gain in that position. Um, for On the 4th of May at 330.29, it pulled back to 269 on the 16th of June, ran up, and it's almost like a price, beautiful price move to the right side, number of bars on the left to the right, and it goes to where? 330.38. I mean, no, three. 330.36, seven cents above. It took from May to August to come all the way back down in a beautiful cup formation. I actually took that away because it was getting a little messy. I'll put it back here because I'm visual and I need to see that. So from this high, I could even go to that high. But look at this beautiful cup formation. This is the bigger one. There's a smaller one within it, and there it is. So it's done everything it needs to do. At this point, I think it's going to start slowing down. But this is where I'm saying for subscribers, this is where we see a rotation from some of the, the, the NASDAQ-type stocks that were just hammered that are now going to show some strength on any weakness that when you see maybe a Microsoft starts to pull back, but you'll get something in the um, former winning, winning stocks Oh, that's just a good Zoom for the moment. We do not have Zoom. I'm just looking at that. Yeah, Zoom's had a big move from 79 up to 124, almost a double, um, and, and now it's taking a breather. It's in leg C. So um, that's a little – but it's the same sort of thing because that was helping the uh, NDX 100 and ARKK, uh, Innovation Fund, move higher. All right, let's get back to our story. So we did the QQQ, and now I'll do the IWM, and then I'm done because there's a bunch that I want to show you. This has now also got chap wave instant restart. I mean, I always put a yellow circle around it. It could fail, but it tells you, hey, be aware, this is another one of those uh, proprietary chap wave techniques that is applicable only to this particular technique. I mean, nowhere in the world. You find me. I, I challenge anyone in the in the entire world, find another technique that takes you to, to a peak D, and if it, in three bars it goes to a high high, could give you a brand new buy mode to go to another four peaks. I mean, you know, that's the way it is. So I'm just saying, this is one of the things I found discovered, trial and error, a very expensive way to find things out. But that was way back when I was hand charting, and this is what we got. So the IWM is actually showing a little bit more strength than some of the others just in the visuals of the chart. And uh, that's the Russell 2000. All right, let's just do this quickly. So gold uh, gold is okay. It's made a peak D. How how important is a peak D in, in the Chapman methodology? It's where you raise your foot off the accelerator, hover over the brake and say, wow, um, anything can happen from, yeah, it could continue, it could stall. This is where you... That, that's a moment where the light it flashes yellow and you just say caution. Well, you know, we we're talking about this, we're talking about this yesterday in the den. We had someone mention six, six flags. I hadn't looked at six flags for a while. Lo and behold, what did six flags do? It had a peak D. It did all these techniques we're talking about. It had a peak D high, six flags entertainment uh, at about 26. And the next thing, maybe earnings came out, is down at it, it, it undercuts 20, now it's bouncing back at 22. Uh, I saw something else go by this morning, uh, which I hadn't looked at for ages and ages. And it just coincided, what a coincidence, it was coincidental to Tommy talking about in his show market kickoff, uh, he was talking about water, uh, but he was talking about water because of the uh, uh, ecological conditions. I've been talking about water for years, saying uh, the big thing in the United States someday will be the conflagration between the states because of water. You talk about uh, um, animosity going on right now. Huh, 
it'll be nothing when that happens. Can you imagine? Because that's your bread and butter, right? Or water. Most importantly, I quickly grabbed a chart that we once had fabulous profits in. And for some reason, I've just not found that I wanted to put uh, our money back there. Well, it had a fabulous move from just under 11 to just over 12 into the 13 area. This is MWA, Mueller Water Products. Um, look at this. It goes to where? A peak D. I grabbed it because once I heard Tommy, and this is a, it's a fabulous show. The way he puts together all the fundamental stuff, and then he and and then he puts the numbers together on the earnings of the different companies. I love that because it's just something I never do, and I, I just I like hearing it because it's very important. Okay, so Muller had a peak D about a week ago at just over 12, and then it cascaded. The, after that D, it went down. From the from the 13, 14 level to 11 round number low, and now it's trying to bounce. How about that for a peak deep drop? I'll be back in a moment. Dow's down up 100, S&P's up 24. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. And in the den, a good one. Um, I was talking about Six Flags Entertainment, and um, H2B says, got down to three flags yesterday. Hey, good one, good one, good one. Okay, so we're looking at Ford. Look at this uh, retracement back. Uh, this is exactly the pattern when I was doing my webinar the other day. We saw in the E-mini, and I said, this can go. This was actually, it was actually a little longer than this, but I said, this is the retest. How it retests, Ford made a high. It's incredible. It's gone from 1061 on the 5th of July. On the 3rd of August, less than a month later, it trades at 16.15. I just have to type that in here. 16.15. And uh, make it light because it's not that important. It's only a peak C. It might be a C1, a C2, but in the meantime, that's what it is. You see, this is what you want. 
Look at the 200 period exponential moving average is down at 14.82. We've traded above it for 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. What it's saying is that instead of becoming a, um, a magnet, it's become a propellant. And that the 1480s to maybe just a little lower, you could go to the, uh, the 14 period exponential moving average, uh, maybe down at the 14. Uh, maybe 1418, sorry, 1480, maybe even 1440 area. That should be at least an attempt to find support unless the general market really pulls everything down. So what I'm anticipating with this particular pattern, leg A in the uh, weekly chart, is that there's a really good chance that that 10.61 low will hold for a while and that the midpoint in the 13 to 12.80 area, that's that fulcrum over there, that peak B, should become an absolutely key support. And to go with that 13.91 is for the very first time, it's Friday afternoon, is coming up in, in, what, four and a half hours. And you've got so far L, that means long, that means that the, that the pink, 49-period moving average is about to move above the, the 14 period black 14-period moving average. That's the first time it's done that since it broke down back in about uh, February or March, uh, back in the 17, 18 area, and plummeted down to the 10, 10s. So now this is the first time that we're getting that kind of action. The MACD in the weekly chart is improving. The stochastic is improving. And I say to myself, wait a minute, if things are that bad, why are we having, even if there's a rotational correction, this is on the upside, I don't know what you call a rotational correction to the upside, meaning you're correcting an oversold condition by moving higher. Um, but whatever it is, this is this is telling us that within each sector, try to find the winners and stay with the winners. That's what I've been trying to do. Just the last two days, we've got extremely oversold stocks. I, when I say extremely, I mean they were at lows after making all-time highs. Um, and so we've added them. I'm a little worried because we've got a little too many positions now. When I get to a certain number, it's always it means that you're just about to get to some kind of a consolidation in the general market. But I'm treating these as rotational, and th they could maybe hold up as some of the others start to pull back. That's really what I'm thinking. Now, let's get back to our story, and the story is that Ford is holding very well. A question came in, where would you add to Ford? I'm in it. Where would I add? I, I didn't say where you're in it, but let's just say you're in it in the 13s or maybe even just a tad lower, between 12, 15, 13, I don't know. I would do this. I'm waiting for this leg D. So to add to a position right here, it means that you're going to, if it starts to pull back from 15, almost 16, down to 14, 80, that's a big percentage, and that's going to mess your percentage up on your core position. I would much rather say, look, I'm in the position, it's doing really well. If it gets away from me on the upside, it's not a position that I can complain about. It's great, except I don't have as much as I want. So this is what I'm going to suggest to you. You can either split a position right now at 1596 and say 1482. This position has two entries, one at 1497 where we are right now, knowing that you could pop a little bit, but within by Tuesday or Wednesday next week, it could be quite a bit lower. And then another one uh, down at the 1480 level. Well, 1418 is only a point, but it's a point, it's a, percent, a decent percentage down. So that's an, an add to. If it was your starter position, I'd have a completely different thing, but you're already in it. So this is what I'm saying. You could, I personally would wait until next week because uh, 50 to 60 points on a 50 to 60 cents on a $16 stock is actually a decent percentage. but And I don't know yet if I can even extrapolate in the weekly to say, wow, this single leg A, even if we pull back a third, should make at least a half of that gain to the upside, taking it to the 1680, 17.35 area. And then you can start to talk about the left side, right side, price time match. But I don't, I don't want to get there just yet. And that's a high of 16.57. Uh, so there's a lot that we're looking at. Then you go to six, uh, 17. Uh, uh, did I say that correctly? 
That should have been 1780. I'm sorry, I think that was wrong. 1780 and then 1825. So look, those are the numbers that I just mentioned earlier on. So I, I can't go there just yet. So I'm saying as an add-on, I'd split the position right now, nibble here, and then. but I do want to at least split the position that you were going to put on into two parts. Start here and then have one a little low down. And if it gets away from on the upside, that's great. Now you've got one and a, and a little bit positions. Uh, that's that's a nice way to look at it. So that's way, one way to do it. Now, the big thing is this. These single leg A's become, I didn't even discuss this on Wednesday, it didn't come up at all. A single leg A up failure pattern. I did mention when I was talking about the Eiffel Tower. That's when it often happens. I don't think that's the case with Ford. I think Ford, because they can raise prices on the, on the cars that they're selling, even though they're not selling as many as they want, I, I I haven't been to a dealer just lately. I had gone a little while ago as an experiment. I went, and it seems to me that they could ask almost any price they wanted. And you either wanted the car in this color or forget it. Call again in another or put it, put your name on the list. So they're really in a good position that way. But it's much better for them to have a, a good inventory and be selling, knowing that that inventory is there this way. They don't know what's going on. All right, that's enough with Ford. Next question I had was, where was it? Where was it? Um, could I look at, oh, yes. Uh, thank you for your analysis. The, thank you for your analysis the other day in the uh, we webinar. Um, I, I had a laugh because you were talking about the Chapman Wave stalk leg formation, that it can go one to one to the upside. Have you looked at the stock you were talking about the other day. So the question uh, all corresponds on the other side. I've got one that said, can you look at the XLF? Well, the XLF is the S&P Financial uh, Spider Fund. I love the fact that it's gone from uh, about 30 to right now it's at 35.10. It is a fraction away from the 200 period exponential moving average. It hasn't even visited the, the close to the X, XLF, has not even visited since it broke down back in April, I think around about the 20th, 21st, April 21st, uh, 38.32 plummeted down to 30 point, what was that low? 30.37 uh, on the 14th, and here it is five points high. That's a nice percentage gain. To me, that was really important. So I'm trying to think. Oh, oh, still the information. I remember that. That was one that we actually own, which is Bank of America, BAC. BAC. Yes, I said, this is exactly the technique that I talk about, Chapman Wave stalk leg formation. There's the leg. It looks like a stalk. There's the oval body. You wonder how it can stand on one leg because it taps the other leg in. And then that was the neck that I drew in. And then while we were in the webinar, I, I, I it, it spiked up like that. And I said, this could come, become a one-to-one, -one, the stalk leg formation could go one-to-one to, -one to the upside. And lo and behold, this is a stalk leg formation, went to a one-to-one -one propeller shaft expansion. I'll be back. Dow's up 105, S&P's up 22. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. 
You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Hi, in the Tiger YouTube, uh, Guardian mentions ILMN, uh, double top, that's Illumina Inc. Symbol is ILM for mother, N for Nancy. And it went from a low in the 170 area to peak A, peak B, peak C, peak D. And then it just pulls back and makes a quick entry into E at 236. And here it is, uh, making a low today of 199. Big plummet from that peak E top. And I wanted to show this. I just, I, I used to have this all notated. I don't know why I've lost my notation on that. Um, it's there somewhere, but I don't have it. Uh, this was making a cup formation, almost like an inverted uh, head and shoulders. But if you look, the stochastic started to fail at that peak D. The, the MACD has only just, is about to turn negative. It hasn't yet. The on-balance volume was weak, and the relative strength was fading. So that was a clue that as it filled this gap that was back from June, uh, around about two in, the two in the two teens in that area, uh, it filled that gap very nicely. It, um, those are all, it did, in fact, I'll do this one I'm talking about. Let me just show you one of the techniques I would have used. Let's just imagine I had no idea where it was going. I would have said my eye is telling me that I could go from that high to this particular level initially, but then my eye from this particular point says it's, it's still way down. I have to go to the low. And the low here is that actual candle low, the doji side and doji ketchup wave side and doji candle on the uh, on the 13th of July. And on the 14th, it makes a low of 173.43. And then what I'd normally do, remember, you don't have to have the rectangle. Everybody has a trend line. You can just take your trend line. I, I change color. You don't have to change color. You can make it just a different pattern. Just go uh, new power on. You can make that. I make it green always, but you could make it green. You could make it dash line on the right and, and nothing on the left. And I put that in. And it says, you know what? Now I use my technique that I discussed on uh, Wednesday to, to find the chapter wave inside wedge target resistance line. Well, it's a very slow slope. I wish I had my protract in front of me. My eye says it's at about 18% or something like that, 20%, maybe a little more, 24%. Um, well, that says, where would it go? So I would do this, and I'd, every day I'd extend it. I'd say, whoa, it almost made it to that point. Um, uh, maybe I should have used the initial one that I was talking about right there. That was this particular peak right here. And see, does that join in to the trend line that I'm matching? Because I need to always, I, I need, if it's not an exact cup low, I need to know that I'm doing the correct analysis because it's at this particular point, it's artistic, but it's always the same principle. So then this one is the one that I would have used. Said maybe that was just too, I was a little too aggressive. And look what happened. It went under, it didn't even get there. This is the line that I was using. 
So that's our draw. Did it fail? Yeah, but you do your best you can. You did your cup formation. Look, everything was matching, but it just took too long. It, too, it was too uh, belabored to get there, so it failed. And now it's pulled back. So that's a technique that I would use in this particular instance. It would be just a guidance, but I didn't need to use it. What I would need to use is this beautiful up channel with the chap wave inside track repellent zone, and it got right, it repelled right at that zone. So here we go. Next question was, uh, where, where did it go? Um, hi, Basil. The V-shape and instant restarts are always the most difficult to understand and make money. How do you have confidence in recognizing it early enough so that you can take advantage and make a good chunk of money? As you know, it's always easy to assess historical charts. I agree. Yeah, absolutely, I agree. But look what we've done. I mean, I, I don't want to go through that again. It's just, you know, I, I, hubris is, is, is really a big part of trading here in, in the stock market. Those elves are listening to you when you, pat, you take your hands to pat yourself, take your hands off the wheel to pat yourself on the back. That's when you hit the tree. So I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to say, um, let's go back to the one that we were looking at, which is Bank of America. Went from uh, It went from the uh, oval pattern up to a peak D. And the reason why I liked it is because it had the potential. I did have this, and then I took it out because I did, it was getting a little messy. I did, I did my homework here, and it had everything intact. Um, it had, I, it, it's going to get messy again, and well, I'll do it. But it had everything that I was looking for in both either the V-shaped pattern. Remember, what you really want is to go to either a high or a low or a particular candle for your left side, right side. And I'm doing this, and I'm saying, yeah, that's a nice rise. This one says to me, we could get there sooner, so I'm not going to use the low, the little doji candle low of the 12th of July in Bank of America at 29.67. I'm going to use this peak right here. So this is where it doesn't become, there's no way a computer is going to pick that out, but my eye picked it out within a split second. So that's the difference. And that might change over the decades, but at this particular point, that's still the way I need to do it. And uh, there it is. So I, I drew that in. And funnily enough, I had actually drawn a bunch of this in, but to explain it, I decided to just make it as clean as possible. So here's my trend line. And that trend line I'm now going to extend. I would have taken it to the top of the left side, right side price time match to there. Well, lo and behold, it's already made the D. It's got another two sessions to go to meet that criteria. And the criteria is to try to make the target. So, so the answer is we have been using it uh, very profitably. I mean, we're in a 30 this is one that we're in a 32.62. I wanted to get in earlier, but I didn't. But we're in a 32.62 on the 19th of July. And it's trading right now at 30. It hit today 36.20. So that was, it's trading right now at 35.89. So, hey, that's a three-point, uh, it's a, uh, yeah, three-point gain, 10%. That's not, I mean, that's pretty good, right? So, uh, and it's in a very short period of time. So everything's done. It's done everything I wanted, and now I could store a little bit. The MACD is good. Stochastic's at 82%. So that was the answer to your question. Um, it's one answer to your question, but there could, could be many other answers. And the instant restart, you see the whole thing about the instant restart, my assessment has been that there probably won't be an instant restart. I think we're getting a little tired in the market. These big spikes at the upside are really two things, a lot of short covering, but there are new positions that are coming in, and, my, and it's only a suspicion. I have no idea, really, whether I'm correct. My suspicion is that you're seeing buying coming into some of the positions that have just been hammered, and that's going to give you a little bit of a cushion. I hope that answers the question. Okay, what are we doing for time? We're doing okay. Question came in here, if I can find it here. Um, uh, Basil, you... Oh. Yeah, Basil, you've got, you talk about these screamers. Can you explain what a screamer is? That's just my own expression. For instance, um, VLDR. I, I had one that came up. Show, I have a, a screen that shows me, but I also have my own list. These are stocks that are under ten per ten dollars, and they have, look like they have a good chance of spiraling as we buy it. If we get it correctly that day, these are trades. But they, sometimes they stay as positions because we've gone in so nicely. To, what happens is it's in a leg D, which is really where you want to be careful. But it is so strong and in a, in a, in a, in a, in a 
a chart formation that says it can really move. And like AIV is one that we had that we had on the list, and it was so strong all the way up. Every day I said AIV, AIV. How can we buy it? Well, the idea is you should just close your eyes, put in a stop, and buy it because at some point it will pull back. But look at this. This was back in the uh, sixes. It's trading at 974 today. It's up 5.8 percent. And again, I didn't get it. AIV. Are you grinding in the market, but seeing little to no return? Or are you a successful trader, simply looking to make your job a little easier? Learn to take the path of least resistance with David White's powerful trading newsletter. David White is an accomplished trader whose deep understanding of technology and the markets allows him to consistently find and share winning trades. Support and resistance define the ranges in which stocks trade. By understanding these trading ranges, David White is able to find the path of least resistance. David White's trading newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, is delivered daily before the markets open to make every trading day an easy win. Visit TFNN.com today and subscribe to David White's Ultimate Trading Newsletter for $119 a month. And try all of our newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Take the path of least resistance at TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. So just, you know, the PD, the fourth highest peak in the Chapman Wave. He has the one minute E mini. It made a peak D. This is very interesting. I'm going to pull this back. Oops, I didn't mean to put that uh, down arrow in. Uh, let me just, oh, that down arrow is incorrect. Just real quickly, I wanted to show a bunch of things as we're wrapping up because we've got a weekend to go. So, folks, uh, uh, um, there we go. It should be a very interesting weekend. We'll see what happens Sunday night because this market is just on a very short-term basis. It's starting to become somewhat vulnerable. So, ABC, what are we doing here in the 120-minute chart? I haven't been able to, to do anything with it because I've been busy with the show. So A, P, B, C, this is the 10-minute E-mini. Uh, I wanted to do it on some other things as well, but I, there was so much to discuss. And just to show the part, chart patterns that are repeating, that's really what we want to do. You were about uh, questions that come in and about answers that we can give that are educational, that you can use. And we're watching this. There's Peak D in the... Uh, um, 10-minute E-mini. Right, let me just put Apple for a moment. Apple. Uh, yeah, okay. This has gone to a peak. Uh, 
probably a peak A. All right, it's stalling. This is the cup formation that we always talk about. Have a look at Apple, see what happens from the left side to the right side. And I'll just put this as a vertical thing. We'll look at it maybe Monday and see what happened. Uh, here it is. Yeah, it's still quite strong, actually. It's holding okay. It's not nearly as strong as it did when it made that high uh, early this on the, on the 11th. Uh, that was yesterday. But what, today's the 12th, yes. Yesterday when it went to 100 and what, close to 171, this is a little bit weaker. All right, let's get back to our story. What are we looking for? <clears throat> We're looking for some um, kind of choppy action. The question came in yesterday. I didn't do it about Baba having calls on Baba. You know, I would just refrain from these Chinese stocks. I don't know why. Um, we've got enough that we have to really concentrate on, yeah, let alone go to another country. Uh, it's just, it's real tough. So I'm considering that this is just a rotational correction, a, a, a correction, an upside correction where some of the stuff's going to come well, start to pull back a little bit, and the ones that have been lagging kind of hold the floor. That's the way I'm looking at it. 